Welcome back to the DBS Studios. I'm here with Severin Francois and also Eli Marquis. And Eli is going to be talking to us a little bit later about the affordability of insurance. So don't watch all of this and say, it's okay for you guys, you know, because you can afford it. No, you can afford it too. So let's talk about the new insurance policy from EC Global Insurance. Severin, guide us, please. Okay. The, it's a livelihood protection policy. And earlier this year, uh, this month, a couple of weeks ago, we had Wu Jing Wang, mm -hmm. um, who is part of the consortium team who helped design the, the policy. So I, I think we have a clip mm -hmm. um, from the interview with her. Okay. Okay, yeah, uh, insurance is part of the risk management strategy. So let me uh, introduce the risk management first. Um, risk management is a, is a concept that uh, why the people and how the people deal with the risks. And uh, people have different uh, strategies to deal with the risks. One is like an XM day strategy and another one is the exposed strategy. And the XM day strategy, uh, what we are familiar with is like uh, the, at the government level, it's uh, the infrastructure investment and the um, extension, for extension, uh, the agricultural extension service, which can reduce the risks, and also the research and development, etc., uh, etc. Et and at a community level, some communities can pull their money together, so when there's a disaster happen, and this money can be uh, dispersed to the people who need, uh, who need aid. And at an uh, individual level, at a farmer's level or individual level, they have a different uh, uh, strategies as well. Uh, for instance, they can diversify the crops. So um, they plant different uh, crops. So when a uh, disaster happened, some crops died, but some cro crops can survive. So this is a, a other way uh, to deal with or manage the risks. Uh, another example is, uh, for instance, uh, the livestock. In many countries, that the farmers raise livestock as the XM day strategies because the crops might die, but the livestock might survive. So they can sell the uh, livestock or they can eat the meat. So these are all the XM day uh, strategies. And there's another uh, group uh, that's the exposed uh, strategies that happens uh, or that's the actions it takes after the disaster have uh, occurred. Uh, for instance, uh, something very, uh, very stressful for individual when there is no extended strategy uh, exists. So they had to sell assets, and sometimes it's the productive assets, and it will has a longer and more severe impact uh, after disaster because uh, even the next season when it's. Uh, favorable for for agriculture, they do they, they already lose their productive uh, uh, assets. How do you encourage people to take out this policy? Why do you think it will work for them? Uh, yes, uh, I will I will uh, explain it more mm -hmm. because insurance is uh, part of the extended strategy. It's uh, it's not the exposed. So let me uh, tell you the extended and exposed first, mm -hmm. and then I will tell you. And for the exposed, uh, uh, some are very stressful, and some sometimes they wait for international aid, and it's uh, it's not easy to predict how many and how when this aid will come. So uh, according to our data, that's uh, one dollar invest in extended strategy will save four dollars of cost if taken afterwards. So insurance, why insurance is important? Because insurance is uh, definitely is the extended uh, strategy because uh, let the people pay the premium, small premium, and then uh, it's the poor mechanism that uh, insurance company pull all the risk together, and when the disaster happened, uh, that money can go to the individuals. So in that case, people avoid the situation that they had to sell the productive uh, assets in order to overcome, to, to recover from the disasters. 
So that's why the insurance is important. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, I think, uh, the question you are asking. Yeah. So this, this new policy, how does it compare mm -hmm. to other policies? And is there anything like this anywhere else in the world? Oh, very good question. Uh, yes. Um, in fact, uh, that uh, insurance is very useful, as I said. However, in many developing countries, it is uh, it's not available or it's too expensive. And why? Because the traditional insurance uh, is um, is not a. Uh, I mean, it the traditional insurance uh, does not work very well for especially for smallholders. Um, let me explain to you why. Because the cost will be too high. Uh, let's imagine that's the property, the traditional property uh, insurance. When the disaster happened, that uh, the company had to go to the individual households to do the loss assessment or loss assessment, uh, loss adjustment, and it's very costly because uh, uh, they go even for the very small uh, holders, they go to very individual one, and the amount is is huge. And also, um, it's very difficult uh, after the disaster because, for instance, the earthquake. After the earthquake, there's a liquid liquidation, and it's almost impossible to go into the building to do the assessment. So all these uh, factors uh, had to transfer or factored to the premium and make the premium either too high or, or sometimes it's just not available. So uh, that's why we are introducing the, this very innovative uh, insurance product. It's called Weather Index Insurance Product. It's based on the index. And the payout is, is based on the objective index, which could be, which is the weather index, weather data measured by satellites. So people do not need to go to the field to do the loss assessment. So uh, it uh, definitely reduces the cost and may make it uh, uh, viable to for the small holders. And also it's very transparent because it's based on the weather data, it's based on, on the uh, National Hurricane Center's data, it's the NASA data, so it's very uh, transparent. There are a lot of uh, pilots and markets, for instance in India there are 3.5 million people covered by the weather index insurance is already mainstreamed to the national insurance scheme. And in Mexico, 2.8 million people uh, are covered by the weather index insurance through the safety net scheme. And in Philippines, we have a very, very exactly the same product covered by the uh, rainfall and wind speed exactly the same and it's implemented in Philippines. So um, we are going, we, we are, actually we are uh, drawing our experience and knowledge all over the world and we bring our best, uh, the, the best practice to this project. Okay, is there anything else that you think is essential that uh, we in St. Lucia, we understand about this new policy? Um, something very important to know is about uh, the limitation. I would say the limitation of the weather index insurance, that's the basis risk. So um, it's uh, not, um, I mean, because it's based by the index, so it's not possible that 100% uh, match the loss. It's not uh, based on the loss. The, the, the payout is not based on the loss or the damage. It's based on the weather data. So the weather data is uh, its objective is based on that. So when people buy the policy, they they almost they had to forget what's the damage damage or happening in their property. They had to focus what's the data, what's the weather data tell them, because it's already a factor to our model. So that's something uh, they they need to uh, understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank